Hey guys, um, so this here is going to be another video of method two on how to get um, alpha vantage data um, from C sharp and place it into a data frame. So um, as in method one, we had to create a CSV and then read in that CSV. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a method by Mark Holt. Um, I'll post his medium blog post in the description or the comments and I'm going to use a Python object to do so. So what we're going to do, we're going to create our new project, a console application. And we're going to call it um, stock prices project. Okay, then we're going to create that. And once again, um, just bear in mind, I'm using my phone screen as a second screen. So there might be awkward pauses from time to time. Okay, so the first things first, we're going to download, um, well, we're going to install two libraries. So we're gonna to go to tools, NuGet Packet Manager, manage NuGet packages for solution. We're gonna browse. The first one's gonna be Microsoft Data Analysis. So this is gonna be for our data frame. We're going to install that. Yeah, okay, accept the license. And then the other one is called service stack. This will enable us to um, read the CSV that's returned from the API. So we're gonna install that service stack.txt, accept. Cool, so I'm gonna put these in our main program, so using Microsoft dot data dot analysis and using service stack dot text. One second. Service stack dot text. Okay. And then what we're going to do, so first things first, as per the blog post, we're going to create an object. So we're going to call this object security public class security data. Apologies for the noise, there's a car outside. So we're going to create object security data. So if you saw from our advantage, we're going to retrieve um, price, the daily price data, and this effectively represents the row to column. So we can, from this, we can put the, every single row, the date and the price from that row, we're gonna put, put that into an object. So what we're gonna do, public date time, so the property, set it as timestamp and get set. Then public decimal this is going to be close. This is basically going to be our close prices. That's These are the only two parameters we're going to take. So you can take more like the open, the high, the low for that particular day. We're just going to take the date and the close price. That's cool. That's our security data object. Now what we're going to do, we're going to create a connection object again. So public class, let's call it AV connection. Going to create you know the read only string again. This is going to be our API key. Okay, then we're going to get a const uh, the constructor and string API key. And then uh, this dot underscore API key equals API key. Okay, and then now we're going to have a method. And that's basically going to be called get daily prices. So public is going to return a list of security data objects and get daily prices. And we're going to put the symbol as a parameter. So the symbol, the string symbol that you request. Let's get daily prices. Cool. So I'm going to have, going to have a constant string called function. It's going to equal to time underscore series underscore daily. 
Then we're going to have a connection string. So connection string equals HTTPS plus the dollar sign string interpolation and it's a raw string. So I'm going to put in, no, the interpolation is for the parameters, the dollar sign you see. And www alpha vantage dot co slash query question mark function equals our function and symbol equals our symbol symbol parameter that we provide and API key equals Braces, this dot API key and data type equals CSV. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the um, list of security data objects from this um, string. So list of security data objects all this prices is going to be equal to connection string dot from the service stack get string from URL dot from the CSV from CSV we're going to get a list of security data. There, and then we return prices. Cool. So what this is going to do, every thing is going to return a hundred, a list of one hundred, because that's what the um, this query is going to return. One hundred um, security data objects. And then now we're going to do, we're going to go back to our main project, our main program. We're going to remove this because the hello line. We're going to set up our connection. So AV connection con equals new AV connection. API key we're going to put in place is demo. Then a list of security data, the prices, and equal to con dot get daily. Oh, sorry. Let's do con double n equal to con dot get daily prices and IBM Let's demo. Cool. Now we're going to do we're going to create our data frame. Well, what we're going to do is going to create the data frame columns. So to do that, we're going to do primitive data frame column. This is going to be dates. So we're going to use the date time object. Sorry, uh, date time object. Um, yes, one more thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to reverse because um, the prices that are returned from this, they're going to be in descending order. Um, just to show you, I want it in ascending order. So I'm going to do prices dot reverse. I'm just going to reverse that list so that it's in um, the opposite order. So that's in ascending order. So now, um, pr uh, primitive data frame column, date time, date time column. And we're going to call this dates, and it's equal to new primitive data time column, date time, bracket. We're going to give it a, the column a name, so we're going to call it date, and we're going to pass in it an enumeral object, and what that's going to be is from this price from these prices it's going to be for every price in that list it's going to be the date for every um like every every security day object the a list of those dates and how we can do that is we can use link q so prices dot select we're gonna have to um like we can just give it a name so let's call sd for security data arrow SD dot, so we're going to access the object and the timestamp of the object. 
then primitive data frame column. Uh, it's going to be a decimal column, and this is going to be our close prices. So let's just call it price call. This is equal to new primitive data frame column decimal. We're going to call it close price, and we're basically going to do the same thing. So prices from each of the prices objects in that list, we're going to select where the objects, the objects close price. So the close um, property of that object, that every object in that list. I'm going to pass it through. So this, just to note, this is a any row object. So it's like a, you can pass in an array, you know, a list, and it will create that data frame for you. I'm sorry, that data frame column for you. So then now what we're going to do, we're going to create our data frame. So data frame, we're going to call it DF, is equal to new data frame. And we're going to pass through in the columns. So date and price call. Okay, so I'm just going to show you when I print this out, console.writeLine. We're going to call it df and then let's just run this should print this out to the terminal if there's no mistakes sorry okay just waiting and here we go here's our data frame so as you can see the timestamp is long and of course there's the overlapping issue but as you can see where the starts with one that's our price these are our prices and this in uh, ascending order cool Okay, so that's that. And then next, I just want to show you, like iterating through the data frame, for example. So what I can do, I'm gonna get the percentage change now for all of those objects. How I can do that is I can create a new column. So primitive data frame column, uh, decimal, let's call it percentage change. And it's gonna be equal to new primitive data frame column decimal. And we're gonna call it percent change. we're going to initialize it with um, a size. So it's going to be an empty column, but it's going to have a size, a fixed size of um, prices dot count. So it's going to have a size of 100, which is what prices dot count is, all of our prices. Okay. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over, and I'm going to do a for loop. So for int i equals one i is less than prices dot count and i plus plus what i'm going to do i'm going to create well just for so it's readable so decimal so the previous i'm starting at one because i'm going to well compare each new day with the previous day to get the difference so let's call this previous price is equal to, I'm going to cast it to decimal, this object, df dot columns close price. I minus one, so the previous day. Then decimal per price equals decimal df dot columns Close price. I uh, apologies. There's that car outside again. So decimal delta or the change between those is going to be equal to our current price. It's the new divided by the old minus one times one hundred. And then we're going to do percentage change. I is equal to math dot round. We're just going to round it. So decimal. I'm going to round it to three decimal places. Yeah. And then we're going to print that data frame. Uh, well, we need to add that data frame in. So we need to and we need to add this column. Sorry, this percent percentage change column to our data frame. So df dot columns dot add. And then percentage change. If you print out a data frame now, it's going to have a um, sorry, 
Let's print this out. It's going to have a new column with the percentage change. Well, it should do if I've done everything correctly. And here we are, our percentage changes. You know, you can check that to see if it's correct, but it should be correct, like down 3%, you know, down 7%, up 5%, and so on. So that's our daily percentage change, and that's a data frame object. I'm just going to do some debugging as well, just to show you the objects that we get returned. Um, so let me just put the breakpoint here. And um, yes, let's run this again. Okay, so now let's go back. So if we go up and we look at the prices object, as you can see, we have 100 prices, and it's the close price and the timestamp. So that's for every single variable. And then you know you can debug and then you can check the um, the columns and what they contain and so forth. Let's see date frame has three columns, and then the rows it should have a hundred. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So as I said, this is um like Microsoft the data analysis is, is fairly new. It's currently in version 0 0.4. Uh, it has yeah, it has a lot of potential. Um, still work in progress, and uh, yeah, that, I mean that's that's pretty much it. How you how, how to utilize it? You can do other things. So I've done a whole um, like stock price project on my um, on one of my um, my portfolios on my portfolio. Sorry, my GitHub profile. You can check that out. And effectively, I've done a wide range of calculations using Microsoft.data.analysis, so it's very useful for that. So you can calculate like the whole performance of your portfolios of various different stock prices when you're buying them at different points in time, if you're long and short, and like many other different things. So you can check out the code for that. And the code for this will be in the description and the comments, and in the description. I'll do like a timestamp amongst other things. But yeah, that's all for now. Um, thank you for your patience and listening. And that's all from me today. So yeah, take care guys.